Welcome everyone to a special edition of the Your Little Castle Show. Periodically we get special word from ABC. They wanted us to do a special show for the weekend. So this is a Sunday night show where we decided we want to highlight one of our best leaders known in the community. He's been on the show now three times. So today we're going to put together a montage of all of the best highlights from Brian, Brian Clouser's interviews here from the owner of Real McCoy Body Works. He really shares some insight and, and secrets, and we figured we should put those all together in a shorter version so you can kind of absorb everything all at once. Because we talk about the importance of understanding when and how and best to get your car repaired in case you've been in an accident, uh, the steps to go through to do that, then the time of year that affects your car and, and what happens uh, because of the different seasonal changes. And then also we want you to make sure you know what to do if you have hail damage or need PDR, as they say. So Brian's going to be talking to us here on this interview, sharing with us the great information he has because he's got, brought a wealth of information for us. So with that, let's get started. Here's our special playlist dedicated to Brian and Real McCoy Body Works. Please enjoy. I don't know, man. It's just neat having cool people on the show that really can share. L ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be one of the coolest interviews I we've done because Brian and I spent a little extra time just talking. It's not always just about business and money and success. It's about the impact you have on this little planet and how you best get along and how you help other people. And we got some great discussion. And, and it, it makes sense why Brian has been so successful. But welcome, please, Brian Clouser, the owner of Real McCoy Body Works. Brian, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I enjoy it. it. I tell you, we, we had a little pregame. We have yeah. a little pregame prep, and sometimes we get it carried on and, and go on. But since we have our own studio, nobody's kicking us out of here. Yeah. And we can talk for as long as we want. Uh, first, let me get a shout out to our sponsors. And, and a lot of people do understand that there there's great sponsors that support the stuff that we do here. And, and it's neat because um, I've been running around for, in St. Louis for quite a while now. And uh, you get to know some of these people like on mm -hmm. a personal level. So Brooke Dubman. I've just known for years and he's such a, and I, I said to him, Hey man, I, I'm starting this new show. Would you like Great intro. Let's jump ahead in the conversation here. Just a bit, everybody check it out. Here we go. The harder they would get hit, the more intriguing it would get. And then it, you know, just kept evolving, growing. And, uh, you do one, you do two and you're just, I'm hooked. I'm hooked. I love them. Well, it, with 40 years now in the industry, being an expert, uh, somebody who's done this since I, I guess you did start doing this when you were in your teens. I walked off a graduation row in 1985 <laughs> and went to work the next day. Didn't even get to recover from graduation. And it's been line drive from there. This interview, I want you guys to, to really dig into it a little bit because it's not just about the business side of the world. It's about being a successful, happy human as brian and i got to really talk about what life is about we don't talk about that a whole lot but that's really what a, a job and a career is a major component for that so that you can provide for the family and, and provide happiness and and help other people and and, and train technicians like you do yeah. i mean and really have an impact so that's what I, I was most interested in when we really got talking about it. here's a guy who really gets it right somebody understands what the, it's really about and i think that then turns around and tell me if i'm wrong but that is what attributes to your success success is what you've achieved and what you've accomplished it's it's not a financial thing it's bringing a technician from nothing up to something and years later finding out you know that this technician has moved on to this and this and this and they become great great you know people and uh they've all started out uh, some of my finest technicians have started out out of school or out of rank in technical college and uh We've honed them and brought them into not men, but body men. And uh, they've become very, very successful in their own rights of what they have accomplished. And uh, we're very proud of that. Well, Brian, I mean, that that's uh, the essence to like uh, being a real contributor to this little planet. I think when you not only can provide for yourself, but then you can help other people to provide. That's what you kind of get to enjoy to do. Is that true? Very much so. All right. Let's talk a little bit more about uh, the excitement you've got going on specifically, because um, it is neat that you've got a successful business, but we'd like to know what are some of the things that set you apart? We, and that's one of the questions I always like to ask somebody. What do you do that really makes the difference? To, 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 if you're going to be the best, you got to do things that 
you do better than anyone else. And we've talked about a number of the uh, things that you do um, that are exceptional. And let's let's talk about a few. I wrote a few of these down as we were we were chatting, and uh, talk to me a little bit about these. First one, you have the I call car gold certification. And if you, and I, what I understand, that's something that really it's, yeah. it's loose, I it's mean, such, kind of sets you guys apart. It does. It sets not me, but other shops that have that iCar Gold class, and and it's just a standard. It's a standard that everything's measured by, and it's a way to signify to the the customer and the consumer, hey, look for this iCar Gold shop, and it means a lot more than what you think. It means that these guys have been tested rigorously in welding and every aspect of the, the repair industry to make sure that they're putting a quality mark on what they're doing and they do know the difference between right and wrong. Really important stuff. Another point you made to me that a lot of people assume that when they are getting a car worked on that, well, I got to go to the shop that the insurance company told me I need to go to. And that is not at all the case. I, I thought maybe it wasn't necessarily, but that's kind of the impression people get. Yeah. But not at all the it, reason. It's built in there, but it's your car. It's your choice. Um, be confident in your shop of choice. Know their ratings. Know their quality. Um, word of mouth is always good. You know, don't let somebody say, hey, I've taken my car here. This is quality stuff. This is a good place to go. And then allow somebody else to tell you you have to go here you don't yeah and i guess another point and i didn't even write this down but you made such an impression on me when you pick that shop pick that shop because it's the one you're comfortable with that, yes and you don't have to go get uh three uh estimates no from three different places uh, to me that's like i don't have time to do that no. i want to go with the guy i know i can trust yeah. and prove it we'll talk about your reviews that are amazing and so then it's just like i don't have I, if I'm taking an hour and a half to go do this, but I do that times three, three. that's yeah. three more hours. That's a lot of time. Time is valuable these days. <laughs> Very valuable. Right. You know? And so tell me, that's something a lot of people don't realize as well. Go to the place that you choose. Get an estimate. Sometimes you don't even need an estimate. Just call your claims department. Get a claim number, uh, a contact person. We'll handle it from there. Uh, you'll be able to drop your vehicle off. We'll get the claims process going and get you in and out the door way faster than taking the time out of your busy schedule, your busy life, getting these estimates and following that procedure. There's faster ways, way faster. Yeah, well, that, that's, today especially, we're in such a high-paced oh, yes. society. Uh, you'd even mention to me that there were times when you met people at the scene of the accident. Yes. And they said, can you come to the scene? Yeah. That's the kind of service you provide. Yes, we'll go wherever you need us to go. Send us pictures. Um, it's a fast paced world. So, I mean, if you have time, um, there's apps out there and we can have your photos taken close, far away, VIN number. And we can get you pretty close to a solid estimate just from that. Well, yeah. And I know that, wow, we could get into a whole discussion about that. When they, when they start talking about pictures, at what point do you send those to the insurance company? Everybody's always wary of dealing with the insurance company. I guess you help people to do that because you're really the uh, on the side of the client, right? Yeah. The customer, the yeah. person who needs the car fixed. That's all we worry about is and, that customer. And, and you know how to deal with the insurance companies. Somebody's been doing this for 40 mm -hmm. years. That's that makes talk a little bit about that and why that's so important. The customer is always the top priority. You know, that's that's who we work for. The insurance company is who we deal with. And you need to make sure that you have everything set right for a great experience on repairing your vehicle because it's horrible from the start you know you've wrecked your car you're in a bad situation there um, your second largest investment is nearly destroyed make sure you have all your ducks in the row make sure that you're getting the proper insurance for your vehicle let's make sure that you have oem riders that you're getting original equipment put back on the car not so much wait to the end and go hey can you make sure i got oem parts on there Talk to your agent about that. Let's make sure we're going to get them OEM parts put on that car because that is the start to making a quality job. 
Yeah, and that, a lot of people don't even, that was another point we got here, the OEM right. A lot of people, what is original equipment manufacturer? manufacturer. Yeah. And I dealt with that in the computer world. And who made this part originally? And exactly. it was remanufactured in some... You don't want that quote-unquote counterfeit, you know, <laughs> part, you know. But explain a little bit to people why that's so important. Because, I mean, it seems pretty clear, but just make sure people understand. You have um, OEM and you have aftermarket. Aftermarket would be the counterfeit to the original, yeah. the real McCoy. Right. You want that. You want that back on your car. That's how your car, the specifications that that panel or that part was built with, you want that back in that car. So let's guarantee that that quality part back on that car. And it helps us as far as fitment and the longevity of that part. So we really like to use that. And that gets into the estimating process. They, they, they say, go get a couple estimates. The estimate's not important. That's just a guesstimate. <laughs> a guesstimate, right. We can't look inside that car. We can't tell what's going on inside that car and behind that fender. So all we can see is what's on the outside. And there's a lot of things as far as photo estimating now with the insurance companies now, where you'll get an app and you'll take pictures of your car. That's just a starting point. It's an estimate. Wow, a lot of great information there from Mr. Brian Clauser. It's great to have somebody who has such expertise. With that, we wanna jump into the next interview that Brian had with us, uh, uh, because he, he really does share with us some great insight as to how you should best deal with these kind of situations. And not just uh, when it happens, but all, all times of the year so that you can be ready for the types of this different type of situation, depending on whether you were hit by a deer or you ran into a tree or if you actually, uh, somebody ran into you. So those are the key things you want to watch out for. And here we talked about the different times of year and the seasonal stuff that has to do with auto accidents. Take it away, Brian. Um, I've seen them go into windshields. I've seen them trying to leap over the car one car hits it, another one's following up and taking the second one out. Uh, under body <laughs> damage, oil pans, radiators, uh, everything. Amazing. Well, let's give a shout out to a couple of our sponsors you can see here on the wall behind me. Carroll House Furniture, when you get off your feet, and we're gonna fast forward here a little bit. Develop. Yeah. People think this is like some voodoo. No, it's pretty no. common sense. Stuff. building up a trust and people trust you and then they want your advice on where to go and you get them there that's right and so with that everybody you take a look here we are wearing our real mccoy shirts i decided to match brian today Thank he, you. he brought me a shirt we've got some cool uh if you like some swag from these guys they've got some stuff here this is the same green shirt you've got these at your office you sell these at yeah the, mm -hmm. people can come yep. come in and pick up one of these there you go we got them the for real, you know real mccoy this time of the year now Try to get festive with everything. Right. I can even get some real McCoy socks. Oh, there you go. You're big time when you got socks. I got some Samsung socks, socks from Best Buy the other day, and now I'm like, I'm getting real McCoy socks there you too, go. man. Very cool. Well, we've got a special surprise for Brian because he is a community leader, and we're going to designate our first recipient of an award we created for everybody. So we'll talk about that a little bit too. So, Brian, this, this time of year, obviously, uh, is there how much of an increase? I'm going to pull up some stats that we researched a little bit before the show. But, I mean... Did I see one out of 37 cars? What state was that? That was Virginia. We are 14th um, in the rankings of animal collisions. 14th out of yeah. all the states. Mm -hmm. The whole number between uh, the whole nation, you're looking at, uh, let's hypothetically say between 1.5 and 2 million. One out of every 37 cars is going to hit. <laughs> That's insane. yeah, because not every An single animal. person owns a car. There's only under yeah, your 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 you're ratio, your odds of hitting yeah. getting hit uh, by a deer or running into a deer are fairly high. Fairly high, and it, and it increases dramatically during this time of the year because yes. of the mating. What what was the word you called that? The rut. Rut. Yes. I thought that was like there was an increase because the, the ground got softer. No. And so you're running into more ruts. Yeah. But the rut is is yeah the rut is between more. October and December. That is uh, starts their mating season. You have all the uh, young deer are now looking for new territories and stuff, and they're moving along. And then you have the deer season. So everything gets them all stirred up and going. <laughs> and so that's where you see a dramatic increase, if you will, in, uh, in some of the issues that you're going to have when you're talking about damage to cars. You've seen some crazy damage, too. You talked oh, yeah. about bobcats, raccoons. I have a friend of mine, actually. Oh, yes. He ran, he's got a McLaren real nice car and, and ran into a raccoon 
twelve thousand dollars worth of damage. Now on a McLaren, it might be easier to hit twelve thousand. I was had the misfortune of hitting one uh, two months ago. About four thousand dollars in damage. Holy cow! Raccoon. Raccoon. Yes. These little guys, they're quick. They're not as, as, yes. as uh, heavy as a deer, I'm sure, yeah. but they hit the right Yeah, piece they of get pieces. right underneath that thing, and, and they go. So the major damage that's caused, you said, is, is often to the The cooling, cooling systems. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your uh, and that's radiators uh, takes them out, your AC systems. So, yeah, a lot of these, everything with the deer uh, is going to be between dusk and dawn. So you need to be prepared um, if you collide with one of these you're going to need to know where to take your vehicle because it's going to nine times out of ten going to need to be towed um you're going to need to know where you're going to go and then how to start directing on the insurance side the beauty of it is well there is no beauty of it um it will fall underneath comprehensive versus collision okay um it can go under collision um if you avoid the deer and you collide with something. You're better off to slowly brake, flick your lights, do whatever you can, but unfortunately it's better to hit the deer than yeah. to go off the road. That's where a lot of fatalities and more extreme um, incidents happen is when you turn real hard to miss the deer. Yeah, so sadly you, you might injure or, or or terminate yes. the uh, go into the, the deer, but it's better than flipping traffic. over and up yes. still yourself or running yeah. into a car across yeah. the other lane and causing other big problems. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a lot of people, the, the, the stats show that there's such a dramatic increase or, or cause of these that, that's I mean, fatal that many, many yes. times. Uh, but let's just to say it's not fatal is that it could be easily a very high cost damage to your car. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when you've got to have a good relationship with an auto body repair company and you've talked a little bit about whoever thinks you have to go to the auto body company that the insurance company recommends but that's not the case how's it best to handle that so that you get best taken care of know know the body shops in your community get a trusting relationship with them know where you're going to go in case these incidents happen where you can say take just take my car here once you get it there all these body shops are open to the same scenario um just drop your car off there relax, get back in touch with them and the insurance company in the morning and uh, start the claims process on it. But know where you're gonna take your car and get it there. That way, because you're gonna be shook up. The, the tow truck driver is gonna get there and pick the car up. You're gonna, they're gonna ask you where you want the car to go. If you have no place to go, it's gonna go to a storage facility until you decide where you're gonna go. And it's still going to end up there. So know your body shop. Get to know your. It's good to have a friend who owns a body shop. Yeah. Good friend of mine here, Brian Clouser. Everybody, get to know these guys. They've done this for forty years. You've been doing working on this. Now? Uh the the yeah. I'm getting old. You started when you were six, I guess, right? So well, <laughs> or close to it. Yeah, I'm at I'm at about fifty six now. So, okay, so sixteen. Yeah, sixteen. If you're going to count, start early. We pull up a an inch, a couple of, uh, stats we'll cite here. Take a look. I'm going to put this up on the screen for everybody too. Uh, but this this is some data here. This is where we talked about Missouri ranks 14th, and this is not just something we made up. This is from our KSDK's website. Um, take a look at that, and you'll see that uh, this is where you end up with um, you, you end up with stats like this are pretty shocking to yes. know that we're 14th in the country. I'm going to go ahead and share with everybody here quickly this uh, this article. Now we'll put this up on the wall behind us, and so. Take a look at that. Now you can see, yeah, um, there's a lot of things that, that are at stake when you're when you're talking about dealing with a car running into an, an animal that weighs 600, 700 pounds. How big yeah. is the average deer? I don't even want to quote that. They're all over the place. Yeah, I'd say some of them are, look like yes. they're 150 pounds, and some of them look like they're about 700 yeah, pounds. Yeah, they look like mules. <laughs> big, and again, so some of the antlers that are off the chart. So how many car crashes are caused by deer? We, we kind of cited this earlier, but 1.5 to 2 million yeah. across the country. In our and area, uh, the stats I remember looking at listening, they're, they're always evolving and always changing. Um, you're running just between those three months, sometimes four to 5,000 deer hits in Missouri alone. And well, understand, there, it, in a while you end up with some these deer. creatures, they don't know any zip right code. Here. They don't stay. I mean, I've seen them everywhere from Ladue, Clayton, uh, right Chesterfield, 
Um, it, it's not just, you know, in the rural areas where there's a lot of wood. How you doing? Um, these things would be in your backyard. You Pretty know, good. They're, they're everywhere. Good eating? Subdivisions, they're you know just out there looking for it. breeding, food. You know, they'll go everywhere. House back when we grew oh, up. And that's a huge stat. A right, large guys, we'll number there. Obviously, we're going to have to. Have fun. We're, we're bringing some light to this because it's something that is worth discussing. What are the most cause? Or what are the uh, the odds? We talked about on the low end, uh, one out of 37 on the high end. If you're in Washington, D.C., it's a little more oh, confined yeah. area. You're still, I was shocked by this. When I'm driving down the highway, there's at least 816. It says one out of 816 cars uh, will be on the road that you might, uh, that one out of 16, 816 is going to run into a deer. Yeah. Well, I'm driving past 816 cars in a day. It was in a 10 minute time frame, depending where I'm going. So one of those one of those cars, probably if there's 1,600, two of them are running into a deer before yeah. the end of the day. That's insane. Uh, and then is it safer to do run over the deer or to swerve? Now, they, they specifically, Brian, again, is ahead of the curve. He talked about this. But for the swerve, we talked here. But, yes, they're saying right here, you cause a lot oh, more damage. Oh, don't swerve. Because when you do that Unfortunately, cut, don't swerve. <laughs> and that's going to cause a lot more damage. A lot more damage. As it is... This is something, this is from Money Geek, and Money Geek talks about how you best save money, so it's cost-effective. It's, it's yeah. word. Well, lots of great information there from Brian. He's uh, an expert, so we're going to continue on. We took a tour of his actual location, and uh, you really get to see some of the great uh, capabilities they have. Obviously, when you have a uh, location like he has with all the tools and resources, this is, a, this is you'll see, is the place to go because there's obviously all the tools necessary to make this happen. So with that, we're gonna share a little bit more information and take it, we took a tour there. We'll play this little clip for you. And as you can see, Brian does a great job. Here it is, Brian Clouser, the owner of Real McCoy Auto Body Works. Body Works right there, you can see it. This guy does incredible business. Right here in Imperial, down the street from where our Cardinal Cowboy grew up. I grew up in Fenton. And uh, we're gonna show you everything that gets done. Starting off with the finished cars. I'll turn around right there. I'll let Brian take over. Everybody started when they come Hello. in the door. So this is where our finished product comes in. This is where we uh, do all the final details. Uh, a lot of paintless dent removal work uh, all happens in here. It has all special lighting up on the top to show us the grid patterns on the tops of the vehicles so we can see all the damage dents, imperfections in the cars. Uh, and this is where all the finals done. And we also do some of our initial inspections here uh, just to see all the damages on the vehicle. Cool, let's go on and throw, show me. Whatever, all the stuff you use to make everybody's cars beautiful. This here is our uh, paint mixing system. This is all the different tones uh, that go in to make up the final paint product. So we take all these different tones here, pearls and everything. We mix everything up on here by a scale and get your finished paint product. And that's what is sprayed on your vehicle. Matches perfectly. Yes. Coming up to here, this is our paint booth. We have uh, parts in here right now. Uh, this bakes up to about 140 degrees. Once the product's painted, it's all baked on for a baked on finish. Usually about 45 minutes in the bake cycle. And then those parts are ready to come out and go on the vehicle. Very cool. Getting the full tour here. This is our uh, body shop side. Uh, this here is just a uh, basically a light repair. Uh, this was damaged to the rear. Uh, just doing some finished mud work on it, gonna get ready to prime this up, and then it still start the paint process uh, on Monday. This is another vehicle that is in the, uh, I would say, midstream process. Uh, parts are all pre-painted, ready to go on the vehicle, uh, getting ready to set up to put a new quarter on this. This was a complete uh, side hit on this one, uh, caused damage from the front to the rear. Lots of work to be done on that one. Yes. This is one that's on the uh, frame rack, getting ready to uh, come off. Uh, all the structure work's done up here. 
everything's full, measured, and set, and ready to go. Cool. Then over here, we have the paint prep area. This is where everything's disassembled, prepped, ready for paint. Uh, this will just come out of paint uh, on a door repair. Uh, and it's going to get uh, final prep, and then it'll be ready to start the assembly process and go out the door. It's about that. There you go. About it. We're back to the, the office. All right. Uh, about a three and a half minute, almost four minute overview of what all the process Brian has and everybody goes through to get a car from totally wrecked to looking like new. Back to normal. Back to normal. All right, everybody. Talk to you soon. Giddy up. All right. As we wrap up here, we're now we'll show the last, most recent interview. And this is where you really get to get into the difference between dent repair and auto body collision repair. And Brian can do both, so that helps a lot for the uh, for those people who are caught in the middle. And somebody, the dent guy says you got to do this, the auto body guy says you got to do that. They're not going to fight because they can be all done at the same place here if you take it to Brian and his facility here. So check that out. We'll show you. We're going to jump into that interview here about ten minutes, about four minutes in, and uh, have Brian share with us what he's got. Here we go. I'm just to glue it on there and pull the dent up, but it takes a lot more finesse than. That one way. <laughs> yeah, it's like anything. You're not going to become an expert doing this one time, no, right? And then no. if you may, the problem, I guess, you would run into with a car is that yeah. you're, you're diminishing the value of your car, causing more damage. Yes. And, and does that you put at risk whether this could be covered oh, yeah. or not? Because yeah. oh, no, that wasn't from the hailstorm. That's from you trying to fix if it. If you don't do and that now, right, you'll you'll make that dent look like <laughs> they call it pickling. You know, it it, it looks bad. <laughs> it looks looks yeah. bad. Okay, so we had this storm come through recently that I literally put a video out and got a couple thousand views on just this little quick video and we got a lot of followers so thanks you guys for for checking it out but I was watching this store this hail just hit and yeah. I thought it wasn't big enough we actually had a neighbor not too far from here um Charlie Schneider came over and he says yeah I'll take a look here we'll do a video about yeah. it and he's like it doesn't look like you've got damage from the outside just you know 30 no. feet away but then when you looked at it really close they had spike hail i don't know if you've heard of spike hail i have heard yeah and so it, yes. it had just made little gouges unless you got like, really close you couldn't see these things mm -hmm. and anyway the point was there's one and a half inch hail he got out his map and he goes let me show you what actually happened because it's all track now yeah. and he goes it wasn't one and a half it was one and a half and one and a quarter and and three inch th or two and yeah. a quarter two and a half and you don't know what hit wherever it may have been and so then how do, what kind of impact that everybody that doesn't have their car under shelter, which is a lot of people, or if they happen to have it, you know, they don't, they're just parked out wherever it temporarily when the storm came through, they better take some serious notice about yes. this for a take lot of reasons. Take a look at that car because you need to get it in, you know, a shaded area and see everything that's, you know, popping out on it. If you don't get it fixed, I mean, it's just a diminished value on your vehicle. You know, you can. Wow. So great information there. Brian doing a great job. And one of our leaders so we wanted to highlight them again we hope you enjoy the rest of our show stay tuned for more everybody Get it.